Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Man drowns at Rocky Point Beach. A man drowned on Monday at the Rocky Point Beach in St. Thomas. He has been identified as 34-year-old Ewar Mitchell of Cheswick in the parish. Reports are that about 4 p.m., Mitchell and friends were at the beach when he went for a swim and encountered difficulties while in the water. His friends went to his assistance and pulled him from the water onto the shores where they tried to resuscitate him but to no avail. He was rushed to a medical facility where he was pronounced dead. Two Sunshine Girls Buses Stolen Two buses used by the Jamaica's Sunshine Girls were stolen from the netball house in St. Andrew on Sunday. The buses used to transport the national netball teams to and from training and also to matches were said to be stripped of their decals before removed from the premises on Sunday morning. Netball House is the name given to the official base of Jamaica's netball teams located in St. Andrew. Netball Jamaica described the incident on social media as a sad day. Prison visit restricted due to COVID surge. The police have advised that due to the increase in COVID-19 cases, prisoner visits island-wide have been restricted with immediate effect. Lawmen said that relatives of inmates who wish to drop off necessities should make contact with the police station in order to make the necessary arrangements. Additionally, persons are urged to make an effort to have inmates who were granted bail taken out of lockups to help reduce overcrowding. Manchester and St. Elizabeth taxi operators reject 15% fare increase. Taxi operators in Manchester and St. Elizabeth have joined their colleagues in other parishes and the National Council of Taxi Associations in rejecting the government's 15% fare increase which took effect on Monday. President of the Southern Taxi Association, Charles Powell, said it is an insult to taxi operators. It is a slap in the face the minister gave way. You cannot have a negotiation going on and you just come out and announce that it is fear increase of 15% without contacting grassroots members, he said on Monday. We learned of the fear increase to the media house just like everybody else, he added. He is insisting that Minister of Transport Robert Montague needs to revise the fear increase. 15% that is dictatorship. Most of my members are objecting to it. As far as I am concerned, I think the minister needs to put his house in order and call back the negotiation team, said Powell. This can lead up to massive island-wide demonstration between now and Wednesday, he added. The Southern Taxi Association represents some operators in St. Elizabeth, Manchester and Westmoreland. Meanwhile, President of the Central Manchester Taxi Association, Shirley Johnson, shares similar sentiments. We instruct our members not to collect any new fear because it is causing chaos right now. The majority of my members are complying, he said. On some of the routes, the new fear right now is less than what they used to charge before. We have to get this sorted out before we can give the members to go ahead, he added. He pointed to the Mandeville to Spalling route, which he said operators were charging $200 before the new fear, which is now $190. The increase they gave us is a spit in the face because you cannot have people waiting for eight years and come give them 15%. After all, that is happening to the taxi fraternity, every living thing gone up. My members have to be subsidizing the school children and the elderly. The government doesn't think about that. They want to give us 15% which we are rejecting, he said. Farmers and fishers urged to prepare for a tropical depression grace. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries have urged farmers and fishers to take the necessary precautions to protect themselves and properties as tropical storm grace is expected to move closer to the island. A tropical storm watch was issued for the island as tropical storm grace moves closer to the country. This means that tropical storm conditions pose a possible threat to Jamaica within 48 hours. The Meteorological Service of Jamaica said widespread showers and thunderstorms are expected to affect the island that could generate flash floods starting Monday night. Additionally, strong gushy winds will be experienced primarily over northern parishes. Fishers are being urged to exercise caution as sea conditions will deteriorate over the next 24 hours, especially in the east and north of the island. 
Other precautionary measures are to be taken by farmers, including the checking of drains, dams and divergent ditches, reaping of mature fruit and storing in a cool place, dry place for use after the event and removal of irrigation lines and equipment and storing in areas secured from damage. In addition, livestock farmers are being reminded to make a check of all farm animals and remove cattle and small ruminants from low-lying areas to higher ground away from river banks and areas likely to have landslides or flooding. Also, maintain open communication with all farm personnel during the storm and most importantly, do not risk your life trying to save animals from drowning. The Ministry urged all farmers and fishers to pay attention to advisories sent out by the Meteorological Service and information from the Rural Agricultural Development Authority and the NFA and to remain safe. PSOJ says stronger vaccination measures may be necessary. The private sector organization of Jamaica, PSOJ, says it is not ruling out the possibility that stronger vaccination measures may have to be taken in the foreseeable future to ensure that Jamaicans get to a level of normalcy and stability as quickly as possible. This follows international survey conducted by the PSOG as it pondered the question of requiring for workforce to be vaccinated or to subject themselves to regular testing. The surveys conducted among members of the private sector indicated that 30% of the workforce is willing to take the vaccine and another 33% are indecisive and are still making their assessments to arrive at a decision. Based on the results, the PSOJ said mandatory vaccination of employees is not required but added that it would not be yet ruled out. Commenting on the hesitancy in the workforce, PSOJ President Keith Duncan appealed to the undecided. Jamaica currently has ample supply of vaccines and they are making a strong appeal to Jamaicans to get off the fence make good sense prevail and go in for one of the many vaccination sites and get vaccinated to save your life, the lives of your family and communities. The PSOJ, however, recommended that the government engage critical stakeholders such as the churches, trade unions, private sector, opposition and all other civil society groups into a national vaccination mobilization effort to boost the Health Ministry's public education program and neutralize the preponderance of misinformation. All these stakeholders must be encouraged to actively mobilize all their constituents to get vaccinated in order to save lives and to get Jamaicans, especially the more vulnerable in our workforce and micro, small and medium enterprises back to work, the private sector group said. It noted that current data indicates that 96% of those who are treated for COVID-19 at the University Hospital of the West Indies or unvaccinated. We believe this is good representation of what is occurring across all our public hospitals that are buckling under the pressure. Our nurses, doctors and all public health workers are put at significant risk and are overwhelmed and exhausted as they do their best to contend with this third wave, the PSOJ said. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell for daily updates.